Hello everyone, and welcome to a special Monday episode of Pulp Crazy. I'm your host, Jason Aiken. This is a bonus episode in celebration of Philip Jose Farmer's birthday today. He was born on January 26, 1918. While Robert E. Howard is my favorite pulp writer, Philip Jose Farmer is right behind him, so I wanted to celebrate his birthday as well with this bonus episode. Farmer did write for the pulps when he was first starting out in the 1950s, before the pulp magazines disappeared from existence. Long after the pulps died, Farmer continued to write pulp theme tales as novels in addition to his vast body of work in science fiction. One of these pulp-themed or pulp-styled novels is Two Hawks from Earth. It was originally published under the title of The Gate of Time in 1966, a title which Farmer was not pleased with. The story was revised and expanded in 1969 when it was published under the proper title, Two Hawks from Earth. Two Hawks from Earth was reprinted in 1985, but I recommend the most recent printing from Monkey Brain Books that came out in 2009. This is due to the informative afterword written by Christopher Paul Carey. Chris goes into Farmer's aviation experience, his science fiction writing, and Farmer's interest in anthropology and linguistics. Chris also delves into the homages in the novel to the works of Edgar Rice Burroughs. He also tells us the differences between the original publication, The Gates of Creation, and Two Hawks from Earth. The Monkey Brain Books edition has the cover which I placed on the title card for this episode. If you see this edition of Two Hawks from Earth available for sale, be sure to pick it up. Two Hawks from Earth is often described as an alternate history novel, but while the spirit of alternate history fiction is present in there, the hero of the story, Roger Two Hawks, actually visits an alternate dimension whose history is played out quite differently than his own. On this Earth, which is spelt E-O-R-T-H-E, the continent of North America never rose above sea level. The only evidence of North America are the highest points of our mountain ranges, which are a chain of islands on this Earth. Since North America never existed, the Bering Strait Ice Bridge never existed either for the ancestors of present-day Native Americans to travel across. This causes the history of this particular Earth to change drastically, as rather going east to travel across the Ice Bridge into North America, the ancestors of modern-day Native Americans traveled west into Europe instead. Roger Two Hawks, an Iroquois pilot serving in World War II, arrives on this earth by traveling through a gate while parachuting, following an air battle which took place over Romania. I found the air battle scene to be very good. Farmer's background as a pilot candidate really showed in this scene. I remember being impressed with his air combat scenes in Doc Savage, Escape from Loki as well. After reading the air combat scenes in these two books, I'm curious to read A Barnstormer in Oz to see if he incorporates any air combat into that book as well. Following the engaging air battle, the story really picks up when Two Hawks touches down on the ground and finds himself on an alternate Earth. There are no Nazis, or even a Germany for that matter, on this Earth. 
but there is a corresponding imperialistic force in the form of the country of Perkushina, which is trying to conquer Europe on this earth. The Perkushininans, and I'm probably butchering that pronunciation, are a largely Lithuanian base force rather than Germanic. They have already conquered a great deal of land by the time Roger Two Hawks arrives. If you've read Philip Jose Farmer's Ancient Opar, World of Tears, River World, Dark is the Sun, or countless other works of science fiction and fantasy, if you want to call some of those books fantasies, um, some were like the Opar series would kind of be like a low fantasy as compared to high fantasy. Um, either way, you know he's a first-class world builder. When he constructs a world, he builds it from the ground up. Languages, history, climate, cultures, flora, fauna. He seems to think of everything when he's putting these worlds together. In Two Walks from Earth, he puts his remarkable knowledge of anthropology to great use, and also takes into account all the additional effects the alteration of the planet's geography would have on the planet and its people. One thing that should be noted in this world is that on this Earth, they haven't developed heavier-than-air flight yet, which makes Two Walks knowledge in the field of aviation quite indispensable. He is looked at by both the Perkushinans and their adversaries as a valuable asset. However, he isn't the only visitor to this alternate Earth. A German pilot named Horst Rask also plays a large role in the story, being just as coveted as a prize as Two Hawks is. Two Walks from Earth is a must-read for fans of alternate history, Philip Jose Farmer, World War II, and classic pulp tales. Farmer really brings world-building to a whole new level with this story. The thought he put into the languages, cultures, and people of this Earth is astounding. His interest in linguistics in particular is quite evident here. But even if you were to take all of that off the table, Two Hawks from Earth still stands on its own as an entertaining piece of action and adventure. I'll put a link to where you can purchase Two Hawks from Earth in the show notes, as well as Christopher Paul Carey's website. I should also point out that Heidi Ruby Miller wrote an authorized short story sequel to Two Hawks from Earth which was published in the worlds of Philip Jose Farmer III, Portraits of a Trickster, or Trickster, rather, by Meteor House Press. The sequel is titled Dakota's Gate. If you enjoyed Two Hawks from Earth, it is well worth checking out. I'll put a link to the Meteor House website and Heidi's website as well in the show notes. I'm also going to be linking to the official Philip Jose Farmer website, run by Meteor House publisher Mike Croteau. I highly recommend visiting the site to learn more about Philip Jose Farmer and his work. Finally, I will also put a link to the Philip Jose Farmer International Bibliography website, run by Zacharias L. A. Nanunga, which is a great resource for international readers and readers in general. Well, that's it for this week's bonus episode. Pulp Crazy is located at pulpcrazy.com. I'm at pulpcrazy on Twitter and facebook.com slash pulpcrazy. My YouTube channel is youtube.com slash pulpcast. You can also email me at pulpcrazy at gmail.com. Happy birthday to Philip Pose Farmer, and thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time.